Hello there and welcome back to another one of my thrilling videos where I talk to you about the kind of cameras that I find in charity shops, shoot with them and then share the results. Today I'm going to be looking at the Olympus Trip 35 which I believe I paid the princely sum of 10 UK pounds for back in the early part of the summer in 2021. Um, so the Olympus Trip 35 um, was introduced into the market um, in 1967 and continued to be in production up until 1984. Although I have seen some people say they did go on uh, until 1988. So somewhere between 1984 and 1988. And, and apparently they sold up to around uh, 10 million units of this camera. So um, it's actually quite surprising that you don't see them with more regularity uh, in kind of charity shops or thrift stores. Um, but um, yeah, this is uh, my Olympus Trip 35, so um, let's have a look at the camera. So um, first and foremost, it's quite a basic little camera, um, but it's also quite minimalist, which I quite like. Um, apparently, um, it, this, this camera really, really took off, I want to say in the 1970s, um, as the very famous uh, film photographer David Bailey um, used this in some kind of marketing campaign and everybody wanted one. Um, because because of the fact not only because David Bailey was using it but it would genuinely get you quality pictures without any fuss whatsoever so let's have a look at the camera so um, as I said it's quite a minimalist camera I guess the most um, exciting feature on this camera if I just bring it slightly forward um, is this kind of a uh, strange looking uh, lens front and obviously we can see the lens but going around in a circle are these kind of like little kind of glittery colorful balls and basically what these things are are selenium cells um, selenium cells are like tiny little solar panels so effectively um, you had to be in well lit areas for the camera to function correctly I'll get um, into that uh, a little bit later um, and, and also so if you was out shooting outside or if you're shooting inside it required a certain amount of light oh excuse me out of focus there yeah you required a certain amount of light um, to trip um, excuse the pun um, the shutter and it's my understanding that this has a shutter of either 1 40th or 1 200th um, and if you wasn't getting the right amount of light um, then you wasn't able to shoot the camera so in some ways it was like a little safeguard feature as I say we'll talk about that a little bit more in a moment um, so yeah so um, there's nothing really more to show you here um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to turn the camera here so we're going to look at the top part of the lens. Um, apologies for the focus. So on the top of the camera here, um, you can see, I'm going to point to it, you can see where it says ASA, which is effectively your ISO, the old style um, way of saying it. Now this camera could go from, excuse me, could go from 25 all the way to, I think it's 400. So keep turning. There we go. An ISO of 400. Um, and you can come down, so 400, 320, 250, 200, uh, 150, uh, 125, 180, 64, 50, 40, 25. So a reasonable range, but um, unfortunately you can't, well, I say you can't, but I guess it's not recommended that you use um, a film that's above an ISO of 400, but I'm sure people could always uh, push those types of films. So that is the ISO um, range. So next thing I want to talk to you about is um, these little colorful kind of icons, and that's quite straightforward. So the way that you would measure distance is, is quite straightforward. On the top, you have a number of colorful icons here. So if you wanted to shoot a close-up picture of somebody, kind of head and shoulders, obviously you would select the first icon there and move it around. If you wanted to have like a head and shoulders picture, then you'd select that one there. A group picture slightly further away, that icon there and then obviously kind of like a, a landscape picture oh excuse me um then you'd set that one there and i just want to turn the camera around the other way because it does kind of give you distances and meters on the bottom so as you can see here one meter would be for kind of like your close-up 1.5 for kind of your head and shoulders uh three for kind of group picture and then obviously your infinity option on the bottom there uh, and it obviously measures it in meters and feet so um, if that's something that's quite important to you then you have that there Okay, so the third thing I need to point out on the top of the camera, I do apologise for the the, the, uh, the focus, um, is uh, these uh, letters and numbers on the top. So this camera was effectively designed uh, to be used um, as an automatic camera. So when you turn this round, excuse me, it's just hard doing this up there. 
when you turn this round, you obviously can select what you want. Now, you were supposed to leave this really on automatic and it would just basically find the right setting for you. Point and shoot, the Olympus Trip 35 is designed for trips, meeting your friends, going out. So the idea of it just being an automatic camera suited everybody. But you did have the option to attach a flash. So if you was going to attach a flash, you had to take it off of automatic and select the aperture yourself. So if you wanted to say 2.8 or 4, or 5.6 or 8 you had to have a flash present and if you see at the end there it says four flash so all of the black numbers have to be used in conjunction with a flash but um, if you think that you're going to be able to control your aperture um, in automatic mode that's incorrect so I just want to just make that clear if you're in automatic mode then it will just automatically take a picture you have no control over the aperture but if you want to use a flash, then you get full control over the aperture. Okay, so looking at the top of the camera. So standard one here to rewind your film. This actually doesn't eject and open the back door. It just lifts up so you can rewind your film. Um, the little um, cold shoe area there for your flash. Not, still got a little plastic protector, which is pretty cool. Um, your shutter button, which we'll talk about in a minute. And then obviously your film rewind icon area. So if you want to open this camera here, um, there's a little lip at the bottom of the camera, which you just pull. There you go. And then that gives you access into the back of the camera. And this is incredibly clean. Um, really, really clean. Um, almost like it just come out of the box. Fantastic, really. Um, if you know cameras, you know cameras. Let's try and, let's try and fire it at the moment. And we'll get onto this problem I have at the moment. Let's try a different angle. And let's try a different angle here. No, no firing, but we'll talk about that in a moment. So, on the side here, you just have a little attachment uh, for your little handle if you want to use it. Um, what have I missed? Have I missed anything else? Bottom of the camera. Bottom of the camera, obviously you've got the uh, film uh, rewind button, so you must press that down in order to rewind your film. And you've also got your little tripod screw. So what I want to talk to you about, when I got this from the charity shop, um, everything appeared to be okay until I got it home. And, uh, and then I did a little bit of research on the camera. Now, when you try, as I said, when you try and take a photograph in an area that is not um, well exposed, the camera will not let you take the shot. Now, I guarantee I'll probably press it and it'll work now. But when it doesn't, you'll get a little red flag come up um, view the viewfinder. So if I press it down now, here we go. It's taken a picture. Um, this is going to be difficult to show you. So I'm just going to stop the video here because I just want to be able to try and show you the red flag. Right. OK, so this little red flag comes up when there is not enough light entering the meter. That is my understanding of it. Uh, but it was like a... Um, a fail safe it wouldn't allow you to take a picture unless there was enough light so the selenium cells this is how i understand it are saying look there's not enough light we're not going to allow you to take the, po uh, the picture as you've just seen now um if i point it at this camera it seems to take it there's enough light now if i turn the camera this way and press it there seems to be enough light and why if i turn the camera towards my computer it doesn't take it if I turn the camera around this way, it doesn't take it. Back around toward the camera, it takes it. So this was troubling. So when I took this out um, and used it, I was kind of getting people ready for pictures. I was in outside in well-lit areas, even if it's a little bit overcast, you know, you're outside, there's plenty of light. Sometimes it would take the picture and sometimes it wouldn't take the picture. And I was completely baffled by this. Um, there's either just a little temperamental fault within the camera, which might need to be fixed. And I also started to wonder about if it had anything to do um, with kind of like the length people were further away. So for example, if for example, I was taking a head and shoulders shot of somebody and I was further away, would the camera block me taking that shot? Um, same if I was trying to take a landscape picture, but I was close up to somebody's face. Now, I'm not the, the biggest expert um, in photography, so I don't know if that was a factor in it. Um, you know, obviously, this camera can see me uh, behind the camera, and I'm going to take a picture of myself right now, and now it's taking it. Now, if I'm going to take a landscape, let's change it. So let's say, let's go to 
Oh, a far away shot. Let's go to a far away shot and I'm going to do the same thing again. And it's taking the picture. So if anybody out there knows what this problem might be that I'm experiencing in regards to suddenly um, it won't let me take the picture, I'd really, really like to know. Um, it's really annoying actually because I really like shooting with this camera and I took out um, an Olympus flash um, which I don't have on me at the moment and I just popped it on the top and it worked fantastically well and a lot of people were kind of coming along and commenting and saying wow that is a beautiful little camera that's a fantastic little camera and um, I just happened to find the one that's got a, you know a little bit of a temperamental thought with it um, I'm very tempted to try and buy another one that's actually working um, but if anybody knows what that thought is that I'm having there in regards to the picture take it there let's just turn the camera over here not taking the picture is that to do with just light um, I don't know so if anybody out there knows please <laughs> help me out um, but otherwise I yeah I really did enjoy shooting with this camera such a I don't know it's so simple I love simple cameras that just just do their job and I've got to say other than one or two uh, pictures that I took with this camera um, you know, maybe one where I moved or was a little bit out of focus I was um, blown away by the quality of them. I, there was something really nice about the quality of the pictures. But please let me know what you think. Um, I'm sorry if I've babbled a little bit in this review. Um, but, um, you know, you all come here for the babbling. You love it. So um, let me know what you think of the pictures. And, uh, and this is me signing off. I'll see you all later.